The House will come to order. All in the chamber and the galleries, please rise. We will begin our day with a prayer by Monsir Kawiki. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let us bow our heads and pray. O Creator, who has made us and gives us this morning as a gift, we bow in your presence at the beginning of another day to offer you the devotion of our hearts. Grant each one of us the resources of spiritual power that we may not be overcome by stress, but by rising above it, make each day a triumph. Make us such radiant personalities and so filled with good will that we may command to the world the faith that we profess. We pray for all of our citizens that they may grow in a sense of co-responsibility with us and that they may, at times, challenge us all to be good stewards of our state. And the House says, Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Gentleman from Jackson. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First order of business will be introduction of special guests. Introduction of special guests. Gentleman from Morgan. To introduce special guests, sir. Please proceed. Thank you very much. As you can tell, we have a lot of special guests in our building today. Uh, we have uh, uh, various students that are in student organizations related to career and technical education as they are celebrating Career and Technical Education Month. Missouri's CTE system includes 444 comprehensive high schools and 57 area career centers. Career and technical education combines academics and occupational skill training to prepare students for careers in agriculture, business, health sciences, family and consumer sciences, skilled technical service sciences, technology and engineering, and marketing and cooperative education. And I'm going to start off our introductions today with three different groups of my own, and I'm sure a lot of other introductions will follow. But I would like in the rear gallery for the Eldon Career Center staff and students to stand, please. We have College and Career Advisor and Skills USA Advisor Mandy Asbury, Skills USA members Alex Brake and Alex Daniels, FCCLA advisor Emily Waller, FCCLA members Ivy Ro uh, Rowden, Kat Rhodes, and Grace Flahar, FBLA advisor Lori Rice, FBLA members Jade Fletcher, Reese Rawlings, uh, Brandon B Bertrand, and FFA advisor Alex Sticknote with FFA members Callie Smith, Mackenzie Ferguson, Autumn Allen, Hannah Beanland, and Henry Knott. Also in the rear gallery from the California High School, if they would stand, we have FFA advisor Adam Berry and FFA members Ella Percival, Gabby Robach, and Emma Russell. And on the gallery to my right, we have the Nichols Career Center Group, CT Director Cody Bayshore, Resource Educator and Skills USA Advisor Stacey Bushman, and Skills USA members Lydia Banderman and Stephen Gentry, who are from the California High School, and FFA members uh, Wrigley. Uh, Welty and Savannah Williams from the Jeff City High School. Please help me in welcoming these members to our house. Thank you for coming to the house. Introduction of special guests. Gentlemen from, from St. Francois. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have an introduction of special guests, please. I have a couple of uh, groups here today. Uh, first, if they would stand, a uh, group from Bismarck, Missouri, uh, from the middle school and the high school. They are from the future business leaders of America. would like to welcome them with their sponsor, Mrs. Hafner. I hope the uh, chamber will welcome them. And then also, uh, Ms. Strobel, I'm not sure where they're sitting, from Farmington, their future business leaders of America. I uh, would like to ask them to stand if they're in the chamber as well. And I'd ask the chamber to uh, give them a warm welcome. Thank you for coming to the chamber. Gentleman from Osage. Mr. Speaker, introductions, please. Proceed. 
Uh, Mr. Speaker, good morning. I'd like to introduce you to Ms. Carol Moore from the Bell Schools. Uh, she and her gifted students are in the upper gallery to my left. These students range in age from third grade through the eighth grade. Please give them a warm welcome. Gentleman from Pulaski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Introduction of special guests. Please proceed. To my left and your right in the upper gallery between the second and third columns, we've got the students and the faculty from the Waynesville Career Skinner. We walked around, if they would please rise, we walked around the Capitol today. Awesome group of folks. Great thanks from them. I'm just kind of sad the seniors won't be able to come back next year, but they're always welcome back. If the body will, please help me make them feel welcome. Gentleman from Pike. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Introduction and special guest. Please proceed. Mr. Speaker, to my left and to your right between the third and fourth columns, I'd like to introduce a couple of very special guests, two of Missouri's finest, Lincoln County Sheriff Rick Harrell and Pike County Sheriff Stephen Cordy. I'd like the body to make them feel welcome. Lady from Boone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Introduction of special guests. Proceed. I have two special groups with me today in the upper gallery to your right and my left. If they would please stand. I have the Southern Boone County FFA group from Ashland. I also have in the uh, rear gallery with me physical therapists from Boone County. I'm proud that my family's been in Boone for over nine generations. And we have a lot of other physical therapists here. And I want to give a shout out to my niece, Dr. Alyssa Tolson, a doctor of physical therapy. Let's give them all a warm welcome. Thank you for coming to the Capitol. Gentlemen from Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just want to remind the body tonight at Mill Bottom, 6 o'clock. It's a Taste of the South uh, presented by Senator Bean. Uh, it's not mandatory, but be there. Thank you. Gentleman from Jackson. Gentleman from St. Louis City. Introduction of a special guest. Please proceed. Good morning. Today I have... On, the, on your left and my right, between the fourth and fifth columns, Josh, Lindsay, Jane, Andrew, Chelsea, Trinity, and Greg. All are physical therapists from the eastern side of our state, and they're here to thank the House for passing HB uh, 115. I'd like to ask the House to welcome them with a round of applause. A uh, gentleman from Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, once again, uh, we've got a very special lady in the house today with a birthday. I don't know where she went. She was just right here. Oh, there she is. My sweet mate for a couple of years here in the house. I just want to wish you a very happy birthday and hope the body does too. Lady from Phelps. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Introduction to special guests. Please proceed. So yes, our future generations have invaded the Capitol today. We're glad to have them here. Uh, my only two schools in my district of Phelps County, St. James and Rollo, are both here. And to your left and my right, uh, under the justice um, word column, if I could please have stand St. James schools. And then behind me, I also have Rollo. So Russell Stevens is here. Um, hold on one second, I'm sorry. Rolla Technical Institute Career and Technical Education Director Lucas Chapman, Derek Chance, the Assistant Director, we have Cord Jenkins, who's the Ag Teacher, and their FFA members Wyatt Lewis, Peyton Whitaker, Gracie Martz, Carol King, and Brody Housewright. And then also I'd like to introduce our St. James FFA Advisors, Tim Davis, 
Trish Watson, our DECA leader Heather Baus, the FBLA group Kristen Lortz, and we also have Missouri FFA State Officer Cody Garver here. If we could all give them a great welcome to the house, please. Welcome to the house. Gentleman from Randolph. Inter yes, introduction, special guest. Speaker. Please proceed. Yeah, up in the, in the upper gallery up here, we have um, from Macon, we have uh, both the FBLA, FCCLA um, ch chapter, if they, they can stand. But anyway, I just want to make them feel welcome. And we have the future business leaders uh, as well, all from, the, from, uh, from my home district of Macon. And we just want to uh, make them feel welcome. Thank you. Welcome to the House. Lady from Boone. Thank you, speakers. Introduction to special guests. Proceed. I don't know if they made it into the upper chamber. If they have, I hope they will stand. I would like to introduce the Columbia Area Career Center student leaders. And their success is due to the passion and the hard work of their educators. So I'd like to make sure that we recognize them as well. We have Sandra Inman, Mike Mers, Meredith Haley, Matt Praisewater, Stacy Ellsbury, Drew Nash, and Travis Plume. So please welcome these educators and these outstanding students. Lady from Dunklin. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Speaker. Introduction of special guest. Proceed. Uh, Mr. Speaker, to your right and my left, between the fourth and fifth column on the lower gallery, we have members of the Missouri Rice Council. We have David Martin, the chairman, Rance Daniels, the secretary treasurer, Blake Davis, a member, and also Molly Buckler, a liaison for Missouri Rice Council. We'd ask the chamber to give them a warm welcome. Gentleman from Bates. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. An introduction to special guests. Please proceed. All right, Mr. Speaker, to your, left, or to your right and my left, between the fifth and sixth column, I'm proud to have the president of the FCCLA hailing from rural Vernon County, the pride of District 125. Today she's joined by her um, uh, sponsor, Lori Bybee, who also pulls double interest uh, at the school, representing FCCLA and FBLA. Charity spent a lot of time as a state president speaking to thousands of students across America concerning leadership skills, professionalism, and the future of a better nation. Please make them feel welcome at the end of her reign. Welcome to the House. Gentleman from Scott. Introduction of special guests, Mr. Speaker. Please proceed. Between the fourth and fifth columns, I want to introduce Benny Club from Wayne County. He's active in Farm Bureau, the Cattlemen's, and Piedmont Chamber. He's here to attend the Jason Bean Taste of the South, and we want the House to give him a warm welcome, please. <laughs> Gentleman from St. Louis City. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Introduction of special guests. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To your left and my right, behind the columns immediately here, there's a group from the University of Missouri at St. Louis, lovingly known as UMSL. At least four of the reps in this chamber attended that great institution, and so I'm standing here with reps Terry and Schwadron. And of special note, Mr. Speaker, my tie Though you might think it's for the Chiefs, two winning organizations with the same colors, the University of Missouri, St. Louis, and the Kansas City Chiefs. Please welcome them warmly. Welcome to the House. Gentleman from Douglas. Introduction to special guest, please. Please proceed. To my left and your right, I've got my bride and forever Valentine, the First Lady of the 155th. Please give her a big round today, Miss Karen Smith. Lady from Iron. Introduction to special guest. Proceed. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in the upper gallery today, I have Tim Harbison from Iron County with the Missouri Bankers Association, and in the upper deck with him, upper deck, <laughs> baseball, upper gallery. Uh, I also have Richard Brummett, who is the FFA sponsor, and to your right and my left between the fifth and sixth columns, I have three students with him today. Alyssa Singer, Joshua Weber, and Miles Brannon. If everyone could give them a warm while round of applause, I'd appreciate it. Lady from Barton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Recognition of special guests. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To my left and your right, and my right and your left, between the first and second columns, you will see some red coats coming forward. So, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to introduce the Lamar Career and Technical Center that came up for CTA Legislative Day. Director Brian Gillis brought several of his student representatives with them. Lane Pearson, wave when you hear your name. Blaine Brashears, Austin Wilkerson, Chloe Cornelson, Lily Weber. I'd also like to add that they are celebrating being open for 50 years. Please make them feel welcome. Congratulations. Lady from St. Louis City, I mean County, excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If you'll indulge, indulge with me, I have two special guests. The first in the building today, if you haven't already seen them, are physical therapists. For the first time in about 20 years, they will not be asking you to pass direct access because we've done that. Thank you to this body. Thanks to all of the students and physical therapists who are here. And Mr. Speaker, if you would, look to the top of the electronic board on my side of the aisle and the gnome has come to visit. I actually don't think he was there yesterday, so a welcome to the gnome and the House of Representatives. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have an introduction of special guests. If I could get them to come up to the front between the columns, between the third and fourth column. We have a group from the Unitech Career Center, their director, Mr. Jeff Cauley, and we have with him several students that are here and, and staff representing Unitech Career Center from Bonterre, Missouri. They do an outstanding job, been very proud to work with that school district for many years and happy to have them here. And if you make them feel welcome, I'd appreciate it. Lady from Dunklin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Introduction of special guest. Please proceed. Thank you. Um, I don't know if they made it into the gallery right now. They were trying to get in, but we have a group uh, from the Neelyville High School Art and History Group, uh, Miss Lisa French's art class and Brandy Lunsby's history class, and they have an art display in the third floor rotunda made completely of rice. And so I'd ask that they give the Neelyville Art and History Group a warm welcome. Gentleman from Cooper. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, point introduction of special guests. Please proceed. Mr. Speaker, if you will look to your left and to my right in the upper gallery there, have a group of FBL, FBLA students from Otterville. If you all will stand, please. Uh, that is Brandon Sewell, Hayden Morrison, and I might add Hayden he can produce world champion country cured hams. So best in the world. Uh, Dylan Hayden and with them is Cindy Birdwell. So please make them feel welcome. <laughs> then if I might, uh, if you will look to your right and to my left, we have representatives from the FFA and FBLA from Pilot Grove visiting today. This is, these are three seniors. There were two more seniors, but they couldn't come in the side gallery here. We have Grace Peterson, Olivia Felton, and Hank Zeller. So uh, upstairs, uh, they couldn't come in, but Ethan Ferendorf and Marcy Lammers are here also. And then if you will give them a warm round, I'd appreciate it and have one more after that. Thank you for coming. Last but not least, uh, the BTEC from Boonville, Boonslick Technical Education Center, is out there somewhere. And I want you, uh, that's where my son goes to school or participates. 
So if there are any representatives of those folks, stand up, and if we can welcome them, I'd thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, introduction of a special guest. Please proceed. Thank you, sir. On your left, my right, between the third and fourth column, we have three very important, valued guests. Luca Hine, Chloe Cole, and Mitchell Cole. And Luca and Chloe have traveled from California and Nebraska, respectively, to testify and advocate about gender dysphoria and gender uh, surgeries, life-altering care that they underwent as children in which they were permanently altered for the rest of their life. And they have found it within themselves to have the courage to finally step forward and be a voice to thousands of others just like them that don't have that courage yet, but may in fact find their voice. I would very much appreciate it if the House could give them a very warm applause and welcome and gratitude for their courage. Gentleman from Jefferson. Introduction to special guest. Please proceed. As you know, we have a lot of people here that have been called out. They're special guests, but everyone that's here, that wasn't called out as a special guest. So for those that weren't called out as a special guest, we need to give them a round of applause because we are the people's house. Gentleman from Andrew. Introduction to special guest, Mr. Speaker. Please proceed. Mr. Speaker, coming in the rear gallery right now, our third and fourth grade gym students from the great northwest of Missouri from the Savannah School District, a fine district in my county, county of Andrew County. There are 25 students with their parents here today and their instructor, uh, Daniel Owen here. Please make them feel welcome in the house. Gentlemen from Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Next order of business will be points of personal privilege. I ask you to recognize the gentleman from St. Louis City, District 84, for a point of personal privilege. Gentlemen from St. Louis City. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Today, uh, permission to give a point of personal privilege. Proceed. Good morning. Today, I'm honored to share a brief history of Gwen Burdett Giles, the first black woman elected to the Missouri Senate. Gwen was born May 14, 1932, in Atlanta, Georgia, to Dennis and Irene Burdett. Three years later, the family moved to St. Louis. Gwen graduated from St. Louis Alphonsus Liguori High School. She took classes at St. Louis and Washington University, and in 1955, she married Eddie E. Giles. In 1963, Gwen Giles and members of the West End Community Conference made national news. The James Dozier Elementary was grossly overcrowded, leading to many children being bused around the city. Long bus rides in the morning meant they were late to school. Long bus rides in the evening meant they had to leave school early. So Gwen and other members formed a human chain and blockaded the school buses preventing the, the children from getting bussed around and demanding quality education in our neighborhood schools. In response, the St. Louis Public Schools built Cook, Ford, and, Mentor, and Mitchell Elementary Schools. I'll remind some of my friends from District 139 and 137 and the lady from 112 that during our freshman tour, we visited Mitchell School. That KIPP Academy Charter School, when you look at the side building, it actually says this was Mitchell Elementary, one of the very schools built in response to Gwen's protests. Mr. Speaker, even more personal than that, and to this 102nd General Assembly, I was one of those young children. A few years after that 1963 protest, I attended James Dozier Elementary. I stand here today 
because Gwen Giles and others stood and blocked the buses so that I could get a quality education. Gwen's activism did not stop there. She later helped her dear friend, Bill Clay, run and become the first uh, black representative for the state of Missouri. A few years later, she would use those same skills to run in a special election, and in 1977, she was elected the first black female to our Missouri Senate. The following year, 1978, she ran for re-election and was re-elected to that same seat. She didn't, you know, of her most noted achievements, Gwen sponsored Senate Joint Resolution 16 to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. Though it failed, this legislation stands today as a testament to what Gwen stood for. Equal rights under the law, education, protecting women, the elderly, and the handicapped. In 1981, Gwen Giles again helped a dear friend, Vince Shamel, run and win and become the youngest mayor in the city of St. Louis. That summer, Gwen resigned her seat in the Senate and became the first woman and the first black to be the St. Louis City Assessor. Yesterday, I spoke with Mayor Shamel and I asked him, what did you think, what were you thinking when you asked Gwen, a woman, to become your first city assessor? And he said, Dell, you have to remember, I was 34. I was pretty young. And I think back about some of my staff assignments. But when I think of Gwen, and I think that I grew up in integrated communities. I went to integrated schools. I had no doubts about Gwen. Gwen was a great lady, a woman of grace, of style, very personable, and self-confident. March 26, 1986, Gwen Giles died of lung cancer. In her honor, in my district, are two places, the Gwen Giles Post Office on Hamilton Avenue and the Gwen B. Giles Park on Catalpa Avenue. So today, this 15th day of February, I ask members of this chamber to rise for a moment of silence in memory of Gwen Burdett Giles. Would members in the gallery and the chamber please rise for a moment of silence. Thank you. Gentlemen from Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Next order of business will be first reading of House bills and joint resolutions and concurrent resolutions. And Mr. Speaker, I ask for a reading of House Concurrent Resolution 18. Mr. Kirk, Mr. Clerk, please read the House bills and House joint resolutions. House Committee Report Number 18, introduced by Butts, an act relating to the National Day of the Cowboy. House Concurrent Resolution Number 18 reads, Whereas Missouri's pioneering men and women known as cowboys helped establish America's frontier, and whereas the first large-scale effort to drive cattle from Texas to the nearest drillhead for shipment to Chicago occurred in 1866, when many Texas ranchers banded together to drive their cattle to the closest point that railroad tracks reached, which at that time was Sedalia, Missouri now known as the Trails End in Sedalia, Missouri, and whereas the Kansas City Stockyards were established in 1871 in the West Bottoms, west of downtown Kansas City, and flourished until the closing in 1981. The Stockyards were built around the facilities of the Central Overland, California, and Pikes Peak Express Company which had outfitted travelers on the Santa Fe Trail and Oregon Trail following the Kansas River. The company went out of business in 1862 following the failure of its Pony Express business from St. Joseph, Missouri to Sacramento, California. Whereas the stockyards and Hereford breeders began the American Royal Livestock and Horse Show in October of 1899, as the National Hereford Show, the first nationwide show for the exposition and sale of purebred cattle. In 1907, the first American Royal Horse Show was added and now includes five different shows known as the Quarter Horse Show, the Hunter Jumper Horse Show, 
the Arabian Horse Show, the Youth Horse Show, and the Cutting Horse Show. The American Royal is an annual eight-week session of barbecue competitions, rodeos, livestock shows, equestrian events, and agricultural activities benefiting youth in education. And whereas in 1926 the American Royal began inviting vocational agricultural students to judge their livestock shows, during the 1928 American Royal, 33 of the students meeting at the Baltimore Hotel in downtown Kansas City formed the Future Farmers of America. Now the National FFA organization has 850,823 members. And whereas a cowboy archetype transcends gender, generations, authenticity, geographic boundaries, and political affiliations, and whereas a cowboy embodies honesty, integrity, courage, compassion, and determination, and whereas a cowboy Vercro spirit amplifies patriotism and strength of character as an excellent steward of the land and its creatures. And whereas the core values expressed within the cowboy code of conduct continue to inspire the pursuit of the highest caliber of personal integrity. Whereas cowboy and ranching traditions have been part of the American landscape and culture since 1523, and today's cowboys continue to strive to preserve and perpetuate this unique element of America's heritage. And whereas membership and participation in the National Day of the Cowboy Organization and other organizations that encompass the livelihood of the cowboy continue to expand both nationally and internationally. And whereas a cowboy and his horse are a central figure in the literature, art, film, poetry, photography, and music. Whereas the cowboy is a true American icon occupying a central place in the public's imagination. Now therefore be it resolved that the members of the House of Representatives, the 102nd General Assembly, first regular session, the Senate concurring therein, hereby designate the fourth Saturday in July each year as National Day of the Cowboy in Missouri. Now therefore be it resolved that the General Assembly recommends to the citizens to observe the day with appropriate ceremonies and activities. Be it further resolved that this resolution be sent to the governor for his approval or rejection pursuant to the Missouri Constitution. House Bill number 1159, introduced by Boyd, an act relating to disbursements of funds by the state librarian. House Bill number 1160, introduced by Schwadron, an act relating to alcoholic beverages with penalty provisions. House Bill number 1161, introduced by McMillan, an act relating to the hospital price transparency laws with penalty provisions. And House Bill number 1162, introduced by Hayden, an act relating to a graduate medical education grant program. Gentlemen from Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Next order of business will be points of personal privilege. I ask you to recognize the lady from Jefferson, District 115, for a point of personal privilege. Lady from Jefferson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Moment of personal privilege, please. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To your left and my right in the upper gallery, we have a very special set of young ladies here today. They are the Class 2 State Volleyball Champs from Jefferson R7. What's really awesome about this team is this is the very first state championship for this high school. We have with us today Sage Bader, Madeline Barbagallo, Emma Breyer, Elizabeth Dalton, Grace Lowry, Helena Lloyd, Christina Lloyd, MacLean McPeters, Grace Niels, Isabella Price, Avery Richardson, Ava Roth, Paige Siebert, Megan Wood, Margaret Wrigley. We have their coach, head coach Tara Fish, assistant coaches Steve Horn, Amy Schneer, Hyla Fish, uh, statistician Jace Berry, as well as Superintendent Clint Johnston. 
I would ask that these young ladies be made pages for the day without compensation. And I would ask that the body make them feel welcome in congratulating them on being the Class 2 State Volleyball Champions. They will be made page for the day without compensation. And congratulations, ladies. Gentlemen from Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Next order of business will be introduction of special guests. I ask you to recognize the lady from Boone. Lady from Boone. Thank you. Um, I hope you don't mind a redo because my group just got seated in the upper gallery to my left and your right. Uh, if they would stand. This is the Columbia Area Career Center. These are the leaders of our group and they are the future leaders of Missouri for sure. Um, I'd like to recognize them as well as their dedicated instructors. We have Sandra Inman, Mike Murs, Meredith Haley, Matt Praisewater, Stacy Ellsbury, Drew Nash, and Travis Plume. Thank you all for joining us and I hope we'll welcome them. Gentlemen from Jackson. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, next order of business will be announcements. Announcements. Gentlemen from St. Charles. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just a quick reminder that uh, today is Wear Red Day, and so for anyone who's interested in being a part of the official photo, we'll be meeting right on this side gallery over here upon adjournment. Gentlemen from Pulaski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Emerging Issues will meet this afternoon at 2 p.m. in Hearing Room 6. Gentlemen, seeing no more announcements, gentlemen from Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask you to recognize the lady from Buchanan for an announcement. Oh, lady from our, Buchanan. Thank you. To speak for a microphone, not my own. Proceed. Thank you. The Higher Ed Committee will meet at 2.30 this evening in Hearing Room 5. Thank you. Any further announcements? Gentlemen from Jackson. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, members are reminded to note their presence with the clerk today. Mr. Speaker, with no other business before the body, I ask that the House stand adjourned until 9 a.m. Thursday, February 16, 2023. Members are also reminded that we will be third reading House Committee substitutes for House Bills 184, 729, and 640. The gentleman from Jackson has moved the House stand adjourned until 9 a.m. on Thursday, February 16, 2023. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The House